Hey friends, today we'll be learning about the shape layers and building our own Pong video. It'll be quite fun, let's jump into it. Alright, let's go ahead and get our sequences aligned, so if you're creating a new sequence or if you already have a sequence created um, make sure that you're set to 1920 by 1080 just regular full HD we're gonna have 30 frames per second we're gonna have a five second duration and make sure that it is a black background as well to use the shape layer tool we're gonna come up here to this little rectangle it might be a different guy but as long as it's left of the pen tool there are these shape layer tools if I hold down you'll see all of these different types of shapes that we can create. For this instance, we are going to use the rectangle tool to be able to create our kind of Pong sequence. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to create one paddle over here. Let's not make it too big. Let's just make it one paddle like that. And then the thing about shape layers is there's two different options when creating shape layers. You'll see now, that I have created my little rectangle, there's a shape layer one over here. Now, if you stay selected on that shape layer and create another shape, you'll see now within that shape layer, you have two shapes, rectangle one and rectangle two. Now, this can be nice if you want to edit a lot of shapes at the exact same time, especially if they are all like kind of like the same shape like let's say you have just a bunch of like squares on here creating like a checkerboard type design or pattern then that could work pretty well to have them all on the same layer the problem with that is if you keyframe those right it will affect all of the shapes on that layer now for this instance we want to create two different pong paddles that are not keyframed together but separately right they'll move depending on where the ball is being animated towards so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to delete the second one within that layer i'm going to make sure i'm selected off of the shape layer in order to create my second pong paddle you could also do the same thing where you just like duplicate the first layer so that they're the exact same size but just for this instance um, as long as you have two paddles we'll be able to create our pong game now let's make sure that we're being organized here. So I'm gonna call this one um, Paddle 2. And then this one I'm also gonna call Paddle 1. Just so we know which one is which. So Paddle 1 is on the left and Paddle 2 is on the right. Um, but we're also gonna create the ball for our little game here. Now you can do this two ways. You can just do the rectangle tool again and create a square shape if you want that to be the paddle or you can create an actual ball i'm going to go ahead and go over to the ellipse tool actually and create an actual ball and now we want this to be a perfect circle right in order to do that instead of just clicking and dragging to be able to create a circle you'll see it's kind of creating different types of ellipses mostly ovals any size shape and form i'm going to go ahead and get rid of that by doing command z but if i hold shift when i click and drag it will create a perfect circle now this is the same with the rectangle tool as well if i hold shift it'll create a perfect square and so that should be the same kind of keyboard shortcut for all of these guys as well if you want a perfect size star uh, polygon uh, anything like that you can create them all equal size um, and equal length if you hold shift down see i'm already making a mistake here i accidentally put my circle into my paddle one layer so i'm going to go ahead and command z out of that make sure that i'm selected off of it and I'm gonna go ahead and create a perfect circle here, probably a really tiny one, so that it is more the shape of the ball that will be played with during our Pong game. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and we are going to do some keyframing like we learned in our previous video. So let's go ahead and name this to ball. Okay, some good things to note here as well before we get into the animating section is you can create and change the fill and stroke of your shape layer. For this instance, we just have a white fill and we have a zero point stroke, so we don't have any stroke on it at all. 
but if you want to kind of create your own kind of pong style maybe i can put like a purple stroke on it just a purple purple one point stroke on it it's kind of hard to see because it is looks like it's just a darker point but if i make it like size 20 you'll see it has a stroke on the outside of it and you can change the colors of that at any time and that is for all the shape layers as well i'm gonna go ahead and remove that but that is just a good thing to know okay let's get into the actual animating of our pong game now you already learned how to do kind of the basics of animation but for this instance to practice it we're mostly going to only keyframe using the position um, transformation now if you remember I'm gonna go ahead and toggle all these down so I don't have to see all of them if you remember I can select all of the layers that I want to be animating and I can press P on my keyboard and it will just bring up position here that I can animate to and I'm gonna start here at the beginning and I'm just gonna go ahead and enable keyframes for all of them because animating them kind of all at the same time and seeing how they move is probably your best bet so that you're not going back and readjusting a lot of things I'm gonna go ahead and animate our first one go over here to like 15 frames and I'm going to move my paddle down and in order to move it equilaterally or in a straight line, I'm gonna hold shift so that it's constrained to those different amounts. So I'm gonna move it straight down like that. And then maybe I'll go over to the ball and I'll move that guy, move that guy over to right about where it's gonna hit on the paddle, boom. And then maybe I'll just put like a little bit of motion into this guy, even though it's not necessary because the ball isn't coming at him yet. I'll put some motion into him. Then I'm gonna go down to maybe like one second. And let's go ahead and move this ball again. Boom, let's move it. Let's say it goes kind of up here, way up there. Let's go ahead and move our paddle in conjunction with that as well. So it's paddle two move that by holding shift as well so that it blocks the ball and let's just make sure that this ball is going to come over and actually hit it now you'll see as i'm moving the ball this won't happen with the paddles because we're only moving it on our y axis but we're moving our ball on the x and y axis and it's giving us this is showing us the line that it will be following for the animation of the ball now this is not a straight line this is something called um, bezier and it's just the interpretation the math interpretation of how it wants to move in order to change this i'm going to go ahead i'm going to select all the keyframes of the ball and i'm going to right click on it i'm going to go to my keyframe interpolation right here i'm going to click on that and you'll see that the spatial interpretation is on auto bezier now i'm going to change that to linear and once I do that, I'm going to press OK. You'll see that now the lines aren't curving. Instead, they are a straight line. It's going straight over to this paddle and then straight over to this paddle. It's set automatically to auto bezier. So if you want it to be more linear, just remember you can come in here, select all your keyframes that it's affecting, go to keyframe interpolation, and then change both of these to linear. Now that that is set, we can go through and we can kind of see what's going on here. Now that is quite fast for the instance of this game. So there are a couple other tricks that you can do with keyframes. Since I'm thinking this is a bit too fast, let's say I just wanna move these two keyframes, I can actually select those and I can click and drag them out. Notice I've selected both of these keyframes because we still want our paddle to move in conjunction with our ball to kind of catch up with it as if we were playing a game and we didn't want the other person to score. So if I do that, you can see now the second part, that is a little bit better than what it was. Maybe I'll move out these keyframes a little bit more as well, so those move in conjunction, maybe move these out because those were moved out, and you'll see kind of creating a little bit of a better looking Pong game. Those are kind of the basics of the shape layers and being able to create our little Pong sequence. 
Now you'll see I haven't done much of the animating process, but I will leave that up to you. You have all of the tools now to be able to make your own little Pong game. Maybe add a lot more keyframes in here, create a really fast paced game or a slow paced game, and maybe someone scores. Well, it's up to you, but go ahead and practice animating your shape layers and creating your Pong game. Okay, friends, thanks for joining us today on learning on shape layers. Our next video will be on anchor points.